the electromagnetic world is a lot about frequencies and we heard this word a lot. So what do you think are the main frequencies in our life? Do you have any idea? I maybe give you a first hint on the macrocosmic level. The day rhythm, you know? Because we should sleep at night and we should be active and the plants they open themselves when it's daylight and, and the animals they sleep when it's night. First, the day rhythm, the animal rhythm, and of course the moon rhythm. I also integrated the moon rhythm, but the moon rhythm often seems to be something getting us off. Some people are disturbed by the moon rhythm. Now on the atomic level, because we have are the most present in our body or in plants or in animals. Carbon, yeah. Hydrogen, yeah. Huh? Oxygen. oxygen, exactly. So you, you got it. see, it's oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, water, of course, which is a combination of oxygen and hydrogen. Electrons. I think electrons are extremely important. One of your questions is, why, what is our frequency? Okay. So if I'm mainly out of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen or a combination of this water on an atomic level, these vibrations are the biggest part of myself. So you already have somehow the answer how we are vibrating. How at atoms look, the smallest atom, hydrogen, it's one proton and one electron kind of flying around it. And the water has this oxygen here and on two sides making kind of a V an angle like this, uh, this is water, that's how we learn it at school. But you know, the quantum physics or the in electromagnetic approach is a little bit different because I can calculate with quantum physics followers the, the frequency of hydrogen, of oxygen, also of water. And how do I imagine this? I imagine this like, let's see, you imagine it like air or something you don't see, an energy which is all over the place. And if you, it has a, sol a certain, if it gets a certain impulse, it will start vibrating. Imagine it like something you cannot see, energy, which is pulsating. If it's pulsating at a certain rhythm, it will be this element. If it's pulsating at another rhythm, it's another element. Now, I said before, the electron is extremely important. I mean, where we have kind of reports on that it is true is exactly what you said. That once there's not enough electrons in the environment, it's a tendency that illnesses increase. This, this is known. And it's often with the ionizers and so on. What do we try? We try to get more electrons into this environment. All, around all these balls in the center, you have the electrons. Around this one you have electrons, and then the next atom here, oh, by the way, this distance here, this is not so close, this would be like, you know, 10 meters, you know, and the next atom would be maybe down there outside. That most of us is voids, nothing. Space, okay? 99. But this is a simple explanation why the chemical model of where they explain, you know, it's like a hole for a key and the key it has to fit in and then they are locked together. That's not the way it works. The way it works is by resonance. Because how can it work like a key when the next atom is down there? There has to be something else. And these are resonance phenomena, you know? As soon as we don't know anything, a scientist, we call it a phenomena or an anomaly. So this is all about working with very low energy and having high effects. It's all built on resonance, resonance phenomena. Okay. It's also a nice example is the glass and the opera singer trying to find the resonance frequency of this glass. And then once she has found this resonance frequency, the glass starts to 
to vibrate, so you could kind of say, brings it to life. And then she sings louder and louder and louder at the same frequency, but always louder. And suddenly, puff, the glass will break, okay? So we've got on the one side, one side we've got frequency, on the other side we've got intensity. And seeing that the radiation, electromagnetic radiation of organisms, of us and other living beings, is very low intensity compared, for example, to technical radiation. <coughs> I heard theories in water treatment and in human beings treatment that the resistance, they just play all frequency, go up and down and play all frequencies. And the theory behind it is that the human body will choose for himself the right frequency. This is just a photo of one of my travels, business travels in France. This is water, drinking water and water for agriculture. Here we've got an antenna, here another antenna, here another antenna, here high tension. So many, many frequencies which don't have anything to do with uh, the most important frequencies in life. So will we choose the right frequencies? Some people who are <coughs> electrosensitive, so it re is really important there to accept this fact when now our body will be able to find the right frequencies. Why does it have problems in such a situation? Because I believe it's better to know what are the right frequencies than to play all frequencies and hoping that the body will choose the right ones, okay? I think it's better to already kind of offer really interesting frequencies to the organisms. I also be, have been comparing many approaches. Rife is a name some people of you might know, and I've made Excel sheets and comparing and seeing uh, is there any logic behind uh, certain things. And finally, finally, really, it was uh, uh, the quantum physics who gave the answers. Really, the big guys in the first half of the 20th century they really found out uh, interesting things and, and uh, it hasn't come to agriculture yet or ha hasn't even come to civil engineering yet, all, all these things. So this, you are now really, I guess, uh, in, in the beginning of an uh, evolution where we have to start taking this into account because what we did so far, we disturbed it with gadgets, with uh, mobile phones and all these things. So we, we did many things already to disturb this electromagnetic vibrational world, but we didn't do so much yet to, to, to help our organism. They probably, he came a little bit later. It's a French scientist, very, very known in the basic quantum physics. He said that every particle or element has a specific wavelength. This is from Einstein, huh? Energy is mass times the square of light speed. This is light speed. And uh, another big guy, Max Planck, he said energy is a natural constant times frequency. Okay? So both describe energy. They probably combined these two to find out wavelengths, but you can combine them to find out frequency. It's also on my homepage, by the way, and you get the presentation, so you don't have to write it out. Mass times light speed equals this natural constant, it's the Planck constant, if someone wants to know, times frequency. Okay, frequency is mass times light speed divided by this natural constant. So, I just calculated many of these elements. If the mass goes up, the frequency goes up, okay? So, which means this small hydrogen atom has a lower frequency than the oxygen. The oxygen is in fact 16 times higher. So, the, the, the bigger an atom, the higher the frequency. Okay, the higher the natural frequency, the shorter the wavelength. The higher the density, you know, so now you can imagine this. A higher frequency is a shorter wavelength, a 
long, uh, low frequency is a very long uh, wavelength. So you match this very short wavelengths. It's very dense. So you can imagine this really uh, without knowing all these formulas. You know, if you have a frequency like a chord moving fast, it looks like a citron. So if you if if you have a fast electromagnetic vibration. It is like a wall, you can go past it. It's, it's already very dense energy. So even if you don't see it, it is there. And now if you put all of these energies close together, so, suddenly you will think, oh, it's a table or it's a body. But it's all vibrating energy still with a distance as far as we said, if this would be a football, the next football is over there out in the field. So, so that's uh, how we are. If this is a guitar chord or piano chord, you start vibrating it, let's call it frequency one. Now you will divide this length by two. The wavelength is divided by two. And we saw the correlation of wavelengths and frequency. It's the same, in fact. Wavelength frequency is the same, just turned upside down. But it's the same. Huh? So as soon as you have half of the length, it will be vibrating exactly two times faster. Okay? It's a, if you divide this here by three, you have exactly frequency 3. But if you have, let's say this, let's call it a natural environment here. This is just a model too. It's only a model. But in this environment here, you cannot find frequency 3.1 or 2.8 or 5.7. It cannot exist here. What will it have the tendency to do? It will have the tendency to modify itself because or disappear, go out of the system because it doesn't feel well in, in, in the system in here. Harmonic ratios are ratios of integers. My main work scientifically of my life, I guess, was this, what I'm showing you right now. As a musician, I kind of have a piano, for example, at this and I can imagine how the frequencies fit together when I bring them all in what we call one octave. So now I've got these elements up here, somewhere in the terahertz, very, very fast vibration. And then if I want to have the same musical note, I just have to divide it by two as many times until I'm here in the audible range, okay? So I take these elements and divide it by two, by two, by two, by two, by two which is many, many times, and then, I, so, so, then suddenly I can hear the frequency. But first, before I can hear it, I can see it. Suddenly I can see it, and I can see colors. And uh, interesting, the color is also built up like a musical scale, exactly identical. And here is the macrocosmic world. This is, is, the, is the rhythm of the day, of the year, of the lunar rhythm. Here I have to do the opposite, I have to multiply it by two, okay? So if you see frequency, for example, of 0 0.000001 hertz, so I have to multiply, multiply, until suddenly I can hear it. And then I put it all in one octave and I see how they fit together. So this is, I didn't read any ancient book for this or whatever. I didn't uh, have anyone speaking to me and giving me a secret that I have to show to people on earth. It is calculating all these things and it will give a result. And the result is extremely interesting. I mean, it blew me away when I saw this. We have here of the main elements an accumulation on this note here, carbon, magnesium, titan, SO3, platinum, gold, here you have another accumulation. Hydrogen, helium, oxygen, uh, copper, zinc. Wow, this is interesting. Water and the electron, the same note. Oh, this is cool. And some places it's hardly anything, you know. Interesting is that elements which have toxic effects, they are not in this musical range. Here, this one seems also to be a little bit off, chloride. the chloride. But you know here, you've got a really important, what I'll explain after, harmonic ratio, okay? See, it's exactly here. 
at the 9 to 8 is also here, but here you don't find any important harmonic relation. When we do implants, there are certain elements which are not rejected by the body, okay? It is gold, platinum, titan, and our bones are mainly carbon, so it's all the same note. Carbon, titan, platinum, gold. Just by applying basic quantum physics formulas, combining it with mathematical music theories, will show us how our body and also the universe is built up. Because if you look at the universe here, the Earth spin on one of the main frequencies, the, the day, the day rhythm is here. Okay, now the annual rhythm is here, where sodium is, okay? All these macrocosmic frequencies are identical with the atomic frequencies. When this biologic process happens here, what is actually happening? You have one atom here and the other one gets together and they want to start making molecules. And it's all a question of resonance and, and electro or magnetic attraction and repulsion, okay? And now if I have an external antenna up on my roof or somewhere or outside over there, and now life uh, basic frequency structure would give it this angle to come together, the two elements starting to build up uh, cells and life. Now I have this field coming in and the angle is distorted, you know. See, when life is built up. And so when the life is being constructed, we have all these external technical radiation and they just disturb this whole thing. So this is disturbance by technical radiation in the cell buildup or the buildup of our organic life. Yeah. 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 Atoms immersion in the chicken that were not existing in the egg. Yeah, so this, the, what happens there this is what we call technically uh, cold fusion, you know. This is life, you know, this is the, we call the secret of life. In fact, if, you, if this all is vibrating energy and not little balls, okay, if it's just vibrating energy, what will happen with these waves, these pulsations, they can just kind of form one single unit, okay? Because it's energy, it's not balls. You don't have to push a ball into the other ball. It's energy, and if, if you have the harmonic ratios, right? They, you know, if you have here a frequency one and here a frequency two, what does happen? This ball, goes with frequency one, this exactly double speed. Every second time, they will touch each other. So they are in a, in a balance. If this is frequency 2.1 and this is one, there will be moments where this one will be expanding and this one pulling itself together. So it will push the other one away because the two frequencies, they cannot be in balance. Life has a program, it, if it's not disturbed, develops a perfect chick by making what technical cold fusion, which is a superposition of frequencies, which simply will, because it's all energy and it's not really little balls, it's just vibrating energy. They can, when they, when, when the, when we have harmonic ratios, they can find the ways to each other. Civil engineer, concrete specialist. And then uh, I was working in a multinational company uh, responsible for the new chemical products and uh, kind of the uh, interface between research development and first applications. And uh, I guess this is my speciality because I am able to talk to scientists, understand the scientists, but I also can go to the work and explain to him what this all means. So, so I'm kind of like a translator of, of this knowledge.